Amen. Well, for the last several weeks, we've been looking at the prophets of the Old Testament, looking at their witness to Israel, their message that they proclaimed, to, to glean from them what it means to be a prophet in our own day, what it means to be an everyday prophet as we follow Jesus in this life, in this world. And so the first week we've uh, looked at Ezekiel and the call that God had upon Ezekiel. And we focused on the fact that when God calls us, we can either react or we can respond. Usually when we react, we react neg negatively and we uh, tend to run away. Um, or we can respond and we respond positively and we embrace that call on our life to fulfill what God is uh, guiding us in to doing in the world. Last week, we looked at Amos and this idea that a, a everyday prophet has a message to share and give witness to in the world, and that message is a message of hope. We are called as prophets to speak hope into every single moment of our lives, the good as well as the bad, and in fact, probably more particularly in the dark moments of our life, we are called to give this message of hope. But the only way that message of hope is heard is if we live a authentic life to that hope. It's not um, just so much of what we say. It's easy to say the right things. It's harder to live and believe the right things as well. And that's just as important for our message to be heard is to live that hope. Today, I want to look at, through this lesson from Jeremiah, what is the vocational active role the prophet has in the world? And we have this image of the shepherd. And to look at this image of the shepherd, I want to uh, set it in the context of today and what is not uh, a good example of a shepherd and um, I don't know if you remember the show at all, but it, um, there was a show that came out, a new reality TV show that came out in 2010. It was called Undercover Boss. And the whole idea behind the show was that high level executives in every industry um, disguised themselves as another person so they can enter into their company as basically just a simple employee so they can understand and witness and see how their employees work what they feel about the company and particularly what they feel about their bosses that are above them and um, i've only seen the show a handful of times but each time i watched it the executive that took on the disguise he or she really wanted to see if um, their employees were doing something that they shouldn't be doing so they can catch them and correct it so they can be more productive. But in reality, what happened was that every time these executives went back in as an employee, they discovered that they were not in tune with their employees. They had no idea what they had to put up with. They had no idea what they had to endure. They had no idea what they were doing to achieve the objectives they were set out to do, nor did they have any idea about the personal struggles each employee brought with them in their work and in the, in the company. And they discovered that they needed to be more in tuned. They had to find ways to be more connected with every employee as best as they can. That's the image that we get here in Jeremiah about the shepherd and God's shepherds that he calls upon the prophets to be in the life of Israel. And he begins by, uh, Jeremiah begins by saying, woe to you shepherds. He starts off by showing them that you are not in tune with the life of the people. You are not connected to the life of the people. There's no way you can be a true shepherd of the flock if you are not intimately bonded to your sheep. 
And in fact, because you spend so little time with them, in a way, you scatter them out into the world. You force them to go astray out into the world. We see this a lot in our own life, right? Oftentimes when we are called to to a leadership role, we are so eager to blaze that trail that we forget to look behind us and see if anyone's actually following us. Oftentimes we feel that leadership is all about making the decisions all by yourself and not not really acknowledging that true leadership is about caring for those that you have charge over. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, for your lack of attention you have caused the sheep to scatter and go astray. A shepherd, according to Jeremiah, inspired by God's word in him, Jeremiah says a shepherd has to be intimately connected to their flock. In fact, there's that old phrase saying that to be a good shepherd, you can't help but start smelling like the sheep, right? There's a a level of intimacy that the shepherd must have with those that they are called to take care of. Israel and the leaders of Israel um, didn't take the time to care for the people of Israel, hence the woe aspect of Jeremiah's message, hence the the judgment that we see in the Old Testament when Israel is taken off into captivity. You did not take the time to be with my people. That word that's used in our lesson, that Hebrew word used, that is most uh, often translated as not caring for, quite literally means not spending time with, not visiting, not being intimately involved. To be a good shepherd, to be an everyday prophet in the world today, means that our vocational act is to be intimately involved in the lives of those that we find ourselves being called to. And it's not necessarily those that that have titles of uh, of leadership. It's just every person who believes in God, who follows Jesus, has this vocational act to care, to show compassion, to give love and nurture to those people around them. The shepherd within us is not found in those moments of our schedules or appointments or in our calendar. You can't make arrangements for these times. When we are called to be shepherds, our active compassion, our caring for, our spending time with is found in the moments of interruption. Oftentimes, I describe my job as best being done in the interruptions, right? We all have plans. We all make schedules. We all have appointments. We all want to stick to them to get things done so we can fulfill certain goals and objectives in our, in our personal life as well as our professional life. But really, as people of God, everyday prophets we have to acknowledge and realize that every day has interruptions, those moments in which someone needs us. It wasn't scheduled. It wasn't booked out ahead of time. But someone needs our care. And we are called to go into that interruption to spend time with and show love for the other. Jesus says in the gospel that he did not come to be served. He came to serve. The prophet not only has a message of hope to give, they have a service and vocational role to act out in the world. And that is this act of being a shepherd, embracing the interruptions of our life and going to spend time with others 
healing, nurturing, strengthening, praying for, and giving compassion to others. We can't help but smell like the world if we do our job correctly, if we do our vocation correctly. If we want to be everyday prophets, we can't help but smell like the world. That doesn't mean we take on the world. That doesn't mean we assimilate to the world, but we are so intimately active and involved in the world to share this message of hope, to love up on others. The shepherd has that connection with their flock. And what is the result of this connection? What is, what is the end game in this intimacy that we desire um, with others? Well, the end game is that passage right there in the middle, that verse right in the middle of our passage from Jeremiah. Jeremiah, speaking as of God, says, I will gather all people, all people to myself, and I will make them fruitful and they will increase in number. See, those words were very well known to Israel, and they should be very well known to us because at the very beginning of everything, at the very beginning of God's story, God says to humanity, be fruitful and multiply. These are words of creation. And when Jeremiah, speaking on behalf of God, says the shepherd's job, the initial primary shepherd's job, being God, is to gather all people to himself, what they will experience is new creation, new life, a better way of living. And as shepherds of God, as prophets of God, we embody this new creation in the world. We not only speak to it, we live it, we build it, we make it known in the world. To be prophets is to care and bring about new creation, new life, new way of being into the world. You are my shepherds, God calls upon us to go out into the world to be his shepherds. An everyday prophet is someone who responds to God, is someone who speaks hope, someone who is authentic in their life, and someone who goes out with compassion and care in mind, being intimate with those around them so that new creation can be seen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this call upon our life to be prophets, everyday prophets in our life. We pray, O oh Lord, that as you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, making us new creations, we pray, O oh Lord, that we embody that in the world, that when we go out to serve, when we go out to live, when our life is interrupted because someone is in need, we pray, O oh Lord, that we turn and go to them to give care, to give compassion so that new creation can be had your word says, anyone who is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. We pray, O oh Lord, that as your prophets, we live, embody, and build to that truth that new creation is entering this world. And we pray this in Christ our Lord. Amen.